a uh, another question from Arfan al Haq is asking. The question is pretty lengthy, but inshallah we'll keep it very concise. The first part of the question is what is the ruling for a woman inside the house uh, to wear the veil, to wear the niqab, or to wear the uh, hijab? Well, the command of Allah concerning uh, uh, covering for women, covering the awrah, right. was due to being before non mahram. Mm -hmm. So if there is somebody who happens to be a non-mahram in the house, then she has to cover before him. Okay. Uh, outside, then she has to cover before him. So it's not related to within, uh, whether in or out. It's related to before whom. Right. So if we have guests, even if this guest is my brother-in-law, then I have to wear the hijab before him because he is not a permanent mahram. As long as I'm married to his brother, he's my Mahram in what sense that it's not permissible for him to marry me anyway. Right. right. But in case that the the, uh, the husband dies, then after the idda, his brother proposes to uh, uh, his sister-in-law, mm -hmm. now who is a widow. Is it permissible for them to get married? Yes, it is. So that's why he's not considered as a permanent mahram. So if I have a cousin, if I have a brother-in-law, if right. I have... Any person who's not my permanent male mahram, then you have to cover before him and wear your proper hijab. Meaning, if you're normally wearing uh, from head to toe, except for the face and the hands, right. then you have to wear that also before every non-mahram. Okay. Another case, if a woman chose to wear niqab, right. in this case, she has to wear the same before every non-mahram. Unfortunately, we see some very uh, you know, interesting and puzzling cases. Where a woman is wearing niqab, and cover from head to toe before right. every non uh, every non mahram. And when it comes to the brother in law, it's okay. <laughs> or the cousin, they remove the veil and they eat together and hang out together. It's like my brother. Right, right. No, we do not divide rules. It is the same here or there. Okay. The uh, the second question that she uh, Arfan al Haq has as well is it's the same nature, but she's asking about the etiquettes of eating. Uh, the husband, the sister's husband, the, the, the wife, so on and so forth. Is there an etiquette that you could maybe give them uh, any advice on? This way, if we have a, a table, a set up for the ladies and a set up for the men, mm -hmm. they, everybody feels uh, much more comfortable with that. What if they sit all and eat together, family members, and she's wearing the veil? It's not uh, prohibited. <laughs> Uh, mingling with them or sitting with them or even talking with them is not haram. What right. is haram is to speak with a melodious voice or a tempting voice or do some tempting activities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَا تَخْضَعْنَ بِالْقَوْلِ فَيَطْمَعَ الَّذِي فِي قَلْبِهِ مرض. So what's prohibited is الْخُضُوعُ فِي الْقَوْلِ But discussing is any issue. Some, some people go to the extreme and think men are not allowed to speak to women or vice versa. It's right. not true. The Prophet used to speak to women and they used to ask him and he used to inquire about their health, their family members. No problem with that. Even greeting them, saying, Assalamu alaikum to one sister who's, uh, you know, I see that it's really amazing that when the brothers and sisters are entering into the same Islamic center from the main door, they, you know, they're reluctant to say, Assalamu alaikum. But once they step out, she may take the hijab off. Not only say, Assalamu alaikum, right, they right. would shake hands as well. Right. Why? There is a very important fact in Islam, which is Islam is not limited to a certain place nor time. time right. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ittaqillaha haythu ma kunt. Fear Allah and keep your duty to Him wherever you are. Right. Barakallahu fiqh. Thank you.